Hello and welcome to your weekly news highlights with me, Hasina Mumtaz. Here are the top stories from this week. We are sad to report the death of the Honourable President Muhammad Zilla Rahman. Mr. Rahman, who was born in March 1925, has passed away in the same month. He was a lifetime supporter of the Awami League and was very close to and highly regarded by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. He was elected to the role of General Secretary of the Awami League four times, was the acting chairperson and in 2009 he was elected president by the Presidium members of Awami League MPs. Our correspondent Ahmed Pupil reports, Muhammad Zilur Rahman was like a father figure to all the members of Awami League. He was an uncompromising person when it came to principles and ideology. He steered the party on a number of occasions during times of crisis. He was an active participant of the language movement, coming in contact with Bangabandhu in 1947. He was actively involved in the 1962, 1966 and 1969 movements. In 1972, he was elected General Secretary of Awami League. When Awami League came to power in 1996, he was a local government minister and took up the duties and responsibilities of deputy leader in parliament. He won the hearts and minds of his peers. In the aftermath of 21st of August 2004, his wife, Ivy Rahman, was fatally injured in the bomb attack and lost both legs before eventually succumbing to her injuries. However, Muhammad Zilla Rahman did not resign from politics and played an active part despite his loss. After the 1-11, on 16th of July 2007, when Sheikh Hasina was arrested, it was Zilla Rahman who took charge of Amal Awami League. It was he who led the movement to free Sheikh Hasina. After the landslide victory of 2009, he was sworn in as the President of Bangladesh on the 12th of February. His passing away ends an era of the politics of Bangladesh. Muhammad Zilla Rahman's successor must be elected by the 18th of June in accordance with the Presidential Election Act 1991 and the Constitution of Bangladesh. Whoever is elected will hold the post for the next five years, which means that the first 12 months of their tenure will be served with the current government followed by four more years with whichever party is elected into office. The Election Commission will start the election process once it has received the official Gazette notification of the President's death. Our correspondent Ahmad Saga reports. Article 123, sub-article 2 of the Constitution of Bangladesh says that in the case of death or resignation or impeachment of the sitting President, and his post becoming vacant, another president should be elected within 90 days. And in this situation, the 90 days time runs out on the 18th of June. Dr. Shadeen Malik, a constitutional expert, said that the acting president can only continue in his office until the 18th of June. Therefore, a successor must be elected. The Presidential Election Act 1991 says that anyone who is an MP and has reached the age of 35 is eligible to be elected president. The new president is to hold office for a five-year term and can only be removed by impeachment by a two-thirds majority of MPs in Parliament. At present, because two-thirds of the majority of MPs belong to the Awami League party, it is highly likely that the candidates will be from this party. The main candidates in the frame for the presidency are Advocate Abdul Hamid Chowdhury, the Honourable Speaker of the House of Parliament and the Acting President and Leader Saida Sajeda Chowdhury. 25 people have died and 500 have been injured in a tornado in Brahman Baria. 3,000 houses have also been damaged in the area. In Zilla Sadar and Akhara Upazila, the tornado has damaged hundreds of houses. The upcoming boro crop has been affected in the region. Two military medical teams have started relief efforts to help the injured. The Honourable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and leader of the opposition Khaled Azia have both expressed their sorrow. Our correspondent, Shibauddin Bipu, reports. On Friday evening, many villages in Brahman Barrier, Zilla Sadar, Akara Upazila and Bijoynagor were hit by a tornado. Many trees and vehicles were demolished in the villages in Sada Upazila. The tornado also caused disruptions to communications. The seriously injured were submitted to local hospitals where the Red Crescent Charity and other voluntary organisations are working to assist the injured. Durjog Bepos Tapona and the Relief Ministry of the Government has promised 25,000 takas and 20 kilograms of rice to the family members of those dead and 3,000 takas to those injured. The controversial Hallmark Group has requested to reopen its factories in an attempt to repay its debts. 
it says that it wants to repay all loans in its name. The group says that the assets of the companies in their group is more than enough to be able to repay all its debts. Our correspondent, Hassan Ul Shawan, reports. A total of 3,500 crore takas, which is approximately £350,000, was embezzled by six companies, including Hallmark Group, from the Ruposhi Bangla branch of Sonali Bank in 2012. After this was disclosed, an investigation was begun by the Anti-Corruption Commission of Bangladesh. Following initial investigations, the managing director, chairman and general manager of Hallmark Group were arrested in a case filed by DUDOC, the Anti-Corruption Commission of Bangladesh. At a press conference hosted by the group, they said that if the bank cooperates, then they are in a position to try and repay back the loan. They said that a few of their establishments are still operating, however, others have been kept shut, which has led to machinery worth crores of takas getting damaged by being left idle. They said that they have 5,000 crore taka worth of assets. They claim that if their establishments are allowed to reopen, then they can try to repay the loan in instalments from the money generated from this. They have also called for their senior company officials to be released from prison. Those are the top stories for this week. Thank you for watching. Join me again at the same time next week. Allah Hafiz.